Hi, I'm Suzanne and here we are again in our little series number three of a conversation with Lonnie Lee. We're going to be asking Lonnie today um, and getting to answer some of the questions that have been asked of him by his fans. So we're going to start now. Okay, Lonnie, hi, welcome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so a lot of people are asking, when, when did you first get started? What was your first singing jobs? Well, it's... Um Actually, it's a whole series of things that, uh, that happened that came into it. But the first job I got was after I did a, um, uh, an amateur hour contest on TUW. And that, that gave me a couple of little jobs. Now, those jobs were, were now, you look back now and they were nothing. But, uh, but for someone that's starting out and there's, uh, there's nothing before it, it's, uh, it's great for anyone to come up mm -hmm. and say, well, here's a, a shilling or here's mm -hmm. um, 10 cents mm -hmm. to do it, to sing for me. And that's what happened. There were tiny little um, beer gardens um, in the middle of in the, at the beginning of uh, Sydney in the uh, inner city, and uh, there were like twelve people there. There's no microphone, no um, no amplifiers or anything like that. It was just me and my acoustic guitar, and uh, just walking around. I wasn't even sitting there anyway. Just walking around, um, singing all the different songs. And if someone requested a song and I knew it, well, I'd sing it. And uh, and I think I got something like the first one. I think I got something like three pounds, which was a lot of money uh, then. You know. But my first couple of jobs, I didn't have a car. And so I would have to um, catch a bus from home, catch a bus, and then a train, and then um, uh, in some cases another bus, or I'd walk. Um, and sometimes I'd have to walk maybe maybe a K to uh, to the place. So are we talking now when you were like about 16? Am I yeah, right 16, there? yeah. Yeah, I was, I was just 16, mm. yeah. So it was, you know, it was a hard slog. Mm. And for those guys and girls today who are, um, starting, you know, don't be afraid to put in the uh, the legwork and and the, and the time. Don't expect it all just to happen. Um, and I know a lot of the young ones do because they come up to me and they, they ask me and they are quite um, quite shocked that one has to put in so much effort. Mm. You know, but it's worth worth it in the in the long run. You know. Yeah. So one could say it's really the journey as opposed to the end result. Yeah. Really, I mean, it's the fun of doing it and doing what you really love to do, and you really loved. Absolutely. You really love to sing. Oh yes, oh yes. I was there because I loved to sing. Mm. I wasn't there for to be a star. There were no stars uh, before me. Mm. There was nothing happening at all. It was just that um, I, I I loved to sing, mm. and uh, and someone was going to pay me to sing. But, mm. You know, I mean, wow, that's that that was as as good as it can get. So, what actually happened, say, from then, from that particular early period of time, what was the first? sort of job that you got, say, when you were 18, 19, that might have influenced your career a little bit? Well, see, you know, I went from there to those little, lots of little jobs, and then I won another big contest, and that's when I started my little rockabilly band, and that was in uh, January 50, 1957, mm -hmm. and uh, rock and roll really hadn't taken on at all. It was just getting played. There wasn't a top 40. It was uh, like a top 10, um, in some stations a top 5. <clears throat> um, and the top 40 was just starting, TUE were just starting, and 3UZ in Melbourne were just starting to to um, dab their feet in and to see um, how this was going to work. And so um, what happened to me with my little rockabilly band, I was singing not just rockabilly songs and the, the first, um, like the first Elvis songs and, and those um, uh, early rockabilly songs, I was singing country, American country, mm. I was singing... Uh, um, standards like being in some cases Bing Crosby, um, Nat King Cole, Frankie Lane, Johnny Ray, who I loved um, before. So it was while it was my rockabilly band, it was an everything band because there was no such thing as just rock and roll. It was it was everything. Even the dancers were still what they called um, 80, 80 20 sort of eighty ballroom, twenty rock and roll. And then I got the 60 ballroom, 40 rock and roll, mm. 50 ballroom. And as rock and roll became more popular, mm. it, then the dancers we became full right. rock and roll. Right. So let's go to you for one of your jobs that really that you really loved or thought you might have even had a career in, I believe. Yes, I guess the first jobs that I, I that really did it uh, for me were that I was getting some attention was um, some of the, the, uh, the jobs that people would... Um, um, uh, young girls who were go going for Miss Australia. That was a really big deal then, Miss Australia. And the girls would go out and they'd have to raise money for charity. And the girl who raised the most money, she became Miss Australia, or mm -hmm. towards that, you know. 
And uh, so in, the, in that aim to raise money, they would be trying to think of what can we do? Can we run a little dance and whatever? So they would hire me. I did lots of these shows and they were for nothing. We, we didn't get paid at all. Um, and so, uh, but we did them and we got more of, more of a following. So it became, a, uh, I became aware of uh, something happening because some of the people who went to this dance um, for, to raise money for this person um, heard about me going to another thing for another and then they would turn up there and then those person would turn up there. and so before you know it I had like a little fan following and that was my first indication that um, that something was going to uh, something was going to happen you know that it was I was getting popular hmm. um, so a lot of those lovely beautiful young women in the Miss Australia thing were around you how, how did you cope with that well that's that's true and and the thing is that it's really funny because you know you look back now and someone of, of my um, age uh, uh, we were from a different era of course than what the kids are of today like a young boy um, uh, starting out today that's 16 or 17 and it's all girls and it's all glamour and it's all superstardom and all mm. that sort of stuff you know mm. whereas in my stuff there with in my my day um, one I was painfully shy because I was a country boy I was really really shy and and two I wasn't interested in girls now uh, that may sound strange it may not but I was more uh, music was my thing I mean singing honestly was 100% of my mm. life that's all I wanted to do was to sing and to play my guitar so while the girls were there were some gorgeous girls around and some of these gorgeous girls uh, today 60 70 years later are sitting in my audience and they're still gorgeous mm. you know but uh, back in those days I wasn't interested in in that sort of stuff as long as I could sing that was that was my go you know just uh, give me a, give me a guitar and give me uh, uh, someone in front of me that I can sing to and right. I'd be fine so now we'll probably head off a little bit into your personal life if you like mm -hmm. can we do that sure yeah okay so okay. how many times have you been married I've been married three times the first time I got married I was really young I it was stupid I shouldn't have got married it was crazy um, but that's what you do when you're young. I mean, you know, you tell your children now or your grandchildren now the same story. Hey, don't do, don't do it. <laughs> but of course, you do it. You don't listen to anybody. And I was uh, I was the same. My band and everyone said, no, no, <laughs> Lockie, don't, please, don't do it. And uh, my mother and whatever. But I did. And uh, so I was uh, I was just 21, mm -hmm. and I got married and um, to my first uh, first wife. It didn't last too long. It lasted maybe just over a year. And uh, she walked out on me and left me with, uh, well, actually two years it was, well, left me with two, two, uh, two little babies. And uh, so that was really difficult um, uh, for me then because there was no help. Today, you know, um, for single people with, uh, with children, there's help. You can get on the telephone and there's government help and church help and whatever help. In those days, there was nothing. I did call churches. I did call government. But there was nothing. Uh, only your family. That was the only thing that could help. Um, so that was my first marriage. In the second marriage, uh, after that one, that was dissolved. Um, I uh, it was like five years after I got married again, and uh, I married. Uh, that lasted for about seventeen years, mm. and um, that was uh, like a normal marriage, uh, up and down, and, and all that sort of mm. uh, all that sort of stuff. But after a while, it just sort of drifted apart, like so many marriages. Mm. Seventeen years, you know. So uh, that uh, that finished, and then. Uh, I, uh, I guess maybe for another year I was pretty much uh, single up or prior to that even though I was married I was like uh, I guess maybe 10 years we weren't to, we weren't uh, a, a couple as such we were living in the same place because of the uh, of uh, my, uh, my little girl but um, uh, uh, then I married um, I married uh, met someone and married someone and that someone was you we might skip that one. <laughs> 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 and here we are, forty years exactly, later. Right, exactly. Yes, exactly. So there you go. So, so you number, number 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 three. Number three. Number but, three. But number one. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you've got a pretty big Facebook following too, I think, haven't you? Mm. Something like five thousand yeah. people on Facebook. So yeah. some of them actually ask. They ask me also through mm. my Facebook. Mm. Um, what instruments do you play and did you actually learn to read music in those early days right. or did you kind of uh, wing it? I did wing it at first because um, uh, my mother and father played piano so I was, I, I was brought up in that, at, that atmosphere and then I, um, I played ukulele um, along with taught myself ukulele uh, and then when I was at school I guess uh, in uh, primary school at Trinity Grammar I was um, I suppose about 11, 10 or 11 I was learning piano 
and uh, but that didn't last too long because when I would hit the wrong notes, um, she'd get a ruler and she'd hit you on the fingers and say no, that, and, which is just I mean unbelievable thing to do. But they didn't do it today. No, but in those days they did. So anyway, I, I said to my mother, hey, I, I I can't cope with this anymore. I've got to um, I, I, I stop. I don't want to go. So I, I stopped, and that was the only real. Um, uh, uh, lessons that I had. The next I got a guitar and I taught myself um, very w with great difficulty really but um, um, I did, I insisted because that was my passion I wanted to do it and uh, so I taught myself um, I taught myself guitar. So um, today as we speak today or even um, 50, 60 years ago I still play piano, I can play rock and roll piano um, and that I can't sit down there and play Beethoven or anything like that but rock and roll piano I can, you know, I'm a, I'm a fat domino and a Jerry Lee and all that stuff mm -hmm. um, and um, I play bass and uh, in, the, in my studio at home I've got a bass, a bass that, I, um, that I play so I can play bass, I can play um, guitar, mainly rhythm I don't play uh, much lead at mm -hmm. all, I didn't go into that because as uh, uh, people who are, want to be a guitarist go in and they learn how to play um, mm -hmm. uh, lead guitar and they're, some of them are absolutely beautiful when they're very very young but in my case my lead was my 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 voice so I just wanted an, an accompaniment to my voice not so much to have a guitar to play a lead mm -hmm. you know can, can I interject here because mm -hmm. I think you wrote a song I did I write a song all about that yeah mm -hmm. called my rockabilly band yeah. And that was all about that, mm. uh, all about the stuff. Join, uh, starting a little band, and um, um, uh, and that was fun. But we didn't, of course, we didn't have a an upright bass, you know, which mm. rockabilly and that had to have. Dum -dum -dum -dum, we didn't have that uh, because they were mainly in orchestras mm. and, and the jazz players. But I wanted that sound, that same percussion sound. So we got a um, we got a a big tea chest, an empty tea chest, and we attached a broom handle to it. And then I uh, tied some string mm. to the bottom of that up to that. So as you yeah, <laughs> as, as you move this the um, the the, uh, the broom and tighten the string, it became ding ding. ding. So when you went when as you go up and down, ding 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 ding. ding. So that gave us our really rockabilly uh, mm. rockabilly sound, and uh, it, it was uh, it was great. It was, it was just absolutely uh, fun. We didn't miss the bass at all. But that was my rockabilly band, and that was all about. Um, me learning guitar and, and all that stuff. And that's what started your dream. And that's right, and that's what it's, that's how I start the song pretty much. <laughs> I was sweet 16 and that's what started the dream. <laughs> uh, uh, um, fingers cutting to the bone just to get the right sound. That's and it. that was right. I used, yeah. my, my fingers used to bleed. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they were. We might the, play it a little clip of that. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. It was at sweet 16. I learned guitar and that's what started the dream Fingers cutting right to the bone Just to get the right sound Learning all the songs Before rock and roll had come along Country music to Johnny Ray I'd play them all until the dawn That slap bass sound was a tea chest broom with string around. Lead guitar that Billy M would play. That was our rockabilly band. Play the song, Billy. to do it even without pay I'd keep on singing didn't want to stop and no one else did want us to we'd sing of mystery trains cheating hearts and walking in the rain Lord I miss the fun we had back then in my rockabilly band like to play 
We love to do it even without pay. I'd keep on singing, didn't want to stop. And no one else did want us to. We'd sing of mystery trains, cheating hearts and walking in the rain. Lord, I miss the fun we had back then in my rockabilly band. Play the song, Billy. Now we come to a, a, a like a probably a real downtime in music for pretty well everybody in the industry, and that was COVID in 20, 2019, 2020. Mm. Tell me how that affected you, and and what really how it really affected you in terms of your band that you'd had for quite some period of time. And mm. so do you want to add away? Yeah, yeah. It was well. I'd had the band. I'd had these guys for uh, a lot of years. Pretty good. Pretty pretty close to seventeen years. Um, and um, uh, so everything was going fine. Then, of course, this uh, COVID stuff hit, and everything was closed down. All the clubs were closed down. Then we were locked down, and and everyone was scared to death of uh, of, of catching this thing. So it was uh, really difficult. And I was um, booked to go back to Tamworth again because we were playing Tamworth every year, and I was booked to go back to Tamworth again. And uh, then it was cancelled because of the lockdown. And then it was opened up again. And so I thought, okay, wow, this is this was great. Um, but my band, in the meantime, uh, with two of the guys in the band, had had um, uh, this terrible fear of um, of getting COVID, and so they knew that we didn't have the vax. Uh, vax. I was I wasn't going to have the uh, the vaccination. I'd done a lot of research on it, and uh, and I didn't care what anyone else did. But I myself, I didn't want uh, didn't want to have it. And um, so uh, the band, anyway, um, knew this. And they would, because they were so petrified of catching it, they said, oh, we don't want to go with you up to Tamworth because um, we don't want to um, um, catch COVID from you. And I said, well, if, if you've had vaccinations, mm. why would you mm. worry about catching something? Mm. Yeah, that's, mm. Aren't there vaccinations for, logical, to stop you? A logical place yeah. to go. Right? Yeah. So anyway, uh, but that didn't, um, uh, they were just so, so petrified that they, they called the uh, the club and they called the, our hotel accommodation and they asked them, you know, are you taking unvaccinated people and whatever? And the club mm. said, the club, they mm. both called me and they said, well, you know, your band are, are, are petrified, you mm. know. And then the next thing I know that they uh, they sent me a telegram and said, well, um, you know how we feel about um, anti-vaxxers <laughs> and uh, so um, um, we don't want to do anything. So that was the end of mm. um, end of the band. And, and the friendship, which is, uh, I, I just couldn't believe it. It really knocked me around because not so much of the band stuff, but because of the friendship that one had had, mm. family friendship for so many mm. years. And they, when one could just chop it off like yeah. that, it was just insane. Anyway, um, that was it. So I, I thought about, well, shall I retire or what should I do? Mm. And when I'm, as soon as I mentioned the word retire or stopping, and uh, everyone say, no, don't be crazy. You can't do that. You can still sing and uh, people still want to see you. So I thought, well, if that's the case, I don't want to get with another band. I, I, I've had bands for 60 odd years. Mm. I, I'm sort of over all that, uh, that stuff again. And so I thought, okay, I'll see if I can, instead of having a musical, um, like a dance type um, performance, which my shows were, um, uh, although there were concerts, uh, <clears throat> I'll do maybe a story thing, something that's, that shows my story. Because at the end of my career, you know, this, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is maybe interesting. And I mentioned it to a few people. I said, yeah, wow, that sounds tremendous because you've got a, a, an incredibly checkered career. So I said, okay. So I got into it and because I'm into, um, into computers and, and all that, I do my own video editing and audio editing and do all that stuff in computers. So I, I got to work and I, I put together, produced a show, which was just me out there. In fact, I called it just me and my music. And so it was just me and the music um, I got some tremendous backings and uh, um, that we uh, that we got from the shows, and I decided to, to in the first half to tell a story of uh, like Lee Gordon and all the, all of the big stars that came out to Australia that I um, did shows with and I became friends with, mm. and plus as well other stars that I that I promoted out here in Australia. You know that they I I wasn't necessarily um, 
uh, well actually most of them I was still on stage with them but um, so it, it was a, a real varied show and very very exciting really and then on the back on the big screens I've got um, them showing up there with all the old video and the stories rolling over as well so uh, while I'm singing the songs with these great backings mm. um, there's the story mm. up there and there they are up there so it's it's a fascinating show and ever since I've done it um, everyone including um, my family are saying that this is much much better than mm. your band than with your band yeah. so, would, so would it be fair to say that you would be probably the uh, and would actually be the only Australian from that early first wave of rock and roll in Australia mm -hmm. to still be really currently alive, oh, not currently alive, but alive today, that can say every act that you have behind you in the audiovisual component of your show, you have had something to do with either, either touring with, meeting with, knowing their career and having some part of, of, of that. So you can identify really mm -hmm. directly which would be, I'd say, oh, I can't think of anybody else in, in the current Australia could have that length no, of history. I'm the only one. Because you're talking 60-something years. Yeah, right? I'm, but, but back in those times, there were, while there were a lot of artists, and a lot of them were very good, and much better, much better mm. than me, and they were on TV and they put out records and all that, and they were very, very popular as well. But there were only three major hit makers that just continually made hits. Mm. Johnny O'Keefe, of course, Cold Show, of yeah. course, and the other one was me. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, there were others that had hits, but they didn't have constant hits mm. like like um, us three did. So, because John Johnny O'Keefe unfortunately passed away so very very young, mm. and uh, and Cole is is retired due to only due to health is is uh, is ill health. Um, uh, I'm the only one left. So a lot of people have, sta uh, have started calling me, and I use now on my shows some of my shows the last man standing. So it doesn't mean I'm the last person. Um, that, that from my era who's out there singing every now and then it means that I'm the last one of those three mm. of those superstars mm. uh, back in that, that era so I am the last one that from that point of view now from the other point of view like you were uh, 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 talking about I am also the last one who performed on the Sydney Stadium with those artists mm. no one else did it was because uh, once again it was still mainly Jock, Cole and myself mm. We were the major ones that mm. did it. So I'm the only one and that had made friendships with all those guys. And in some cases, still friends if they're still alive. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Lonnie. It was really great to sort of to have you here always and lovely to share your thoughts and some of your really quite personal um, information and what have you. So I hope we can do this again another time, number four. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Suzanne. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay.